Hello, and welcome to the Silent Tech Talk on how to select a spreader. My name is Bob Iverson, and I'm the product manager for the SnowX brand of products. I've been in the snow and ice industry for over 10 years. I started my career in engineering, but found my way into product management side of the business because of my true passion for serving the customer by delivering helpful solutions to make their life better. When you're in the market for a spreader, there are a lot of choices out there, and for good reasons. In an attempt to simplify the decision-making process, I'm going to explain a simpler method that hopefully resonates with your business. Typically, there are three main choices to make. Number one is the drive system, which is usually driven by either an auger or chain conveyor and can be powered by either an electric motor, gas engine, or a central hydraulic system for the vehicle. Number two is the capacity, which ranges from approximately a half cubic yard to six cubic yards. And number three is the material it is constructed of, which is pretty simple, poly or stainless steel. That's a lot of choices to make, so I suggest starting with the first decision. What type of material will be spread? Is it salt, salt sand mix, sand, or some other unique material? With that decision made, we can now start the journey of figuring out which spreader will work best for you. The next decision to make is the drive system. We need to identify a drive system that matches the requirements of the material type to be spread. To do this, we'll break it into two parts, material delivery and power delivery. To standardize the discussion, let's focus on industry best practices. If bulk salt is the main material to be used, you're probably treating accounts in a decent sized city where the main focus is safety, which means getting the black pavement. Industry best practices using a pre-wet salt suggest you need to spread as low as 175 pounds per acre, but a typical application rate is around 500 pounds per acre. If sand or a sand salt mix is the main material to be used, you probably are in more a rural area where the main focus is traction. Industry best practices using sand suggest you need up to 3,000 pounds per acre for good traction. Fun fact, did you know it only takes 18 vehicles to carry away material and diminish the traction benefits of sand? What it boils down to is this. If bulk salt is the main material to be used, then an auger system is well matched for the feeds and speeds needed to meet industry best practices. I've listed an example here of the SnowX Helix 0.7 cubic yard spreader to give you an idea of how it works. Holding the spread width constant and turning the auger up to full speed, you can apply 395 pounds per acre if traveling at 15 miles per hour. By slowing the speed of the vehicle down to 5 miles per hour, you're now putting out 1,175 pounds per acre. I've also listed the same example at the lowest auger speed setting. This shows that the spreader is capable of meeting industry best practices at a decent traveling speed and accounts for those tighter spaces or high traffic areas that require a slower speed as well as some of the more open spaces that allow the vehicle to travel faster. However, this is not a good spreader if you need to treat a roadway at higher speeds since the drivetrain simply can't output material fast enough. What if the main material to be used is sand or a sand salt mix? Then a chain conveyor system is the better choice for many reasons. The first is the type of system is capable of outputting more than 3,000 pounds per acre. Second, the external feed gate helps limit the flow for slower speed and higher traffic areas. And number three is the robust design of the conveyor system allows for a wide variety of materials, such as gravel or other materials mixed in. We sometimes refer to this system as the Swiss Army knife of spreaders. However, this system is more difficult to determine the application rate and wouldn't be ideal for trying to dial in industry best practices for salt and improving salt usage efficiency for your business. Now you have an idea of the dry system type. It's time to decide how it should be powered. The options are an electric motor, which is a great choice for spreaders since they are sealed well to limit the corrosive environment from getting in and they typically have enough power 
to run the larger drive systems from 4 to 6 cubic yards. The gas engine used to be the ideal power delivery because of its abundant power output, capable of tackling any application. However, they require more maintenance since they live in such a corrosive environment. Then there's central hydraulics, which are only a choice if you have a vehicle already equipped. Keep in mind, this type of system typically comes with very simple controls, which make it harder to determine the material output. The third major decision to make is the capacity. When choosing capacity for a spreader, there are a couple of questions to ask first. Do I already have a vehicle that I'm going to use? Or am I going to shop for a new vehicle to go along with my spreader? If you already have a vehicle, you need to understand its payload capacity or its ground vehicle weight rating. What if you're in the market for a new vehicle too? Then consider route logistics of your current accounts. Less trips back to the salt pile saves a lot of time. As we move forward, keep in mind the basics. One cubic yard of salt weighs approximately 2,000 pounds, and one cubic yard of sand weighs approximately 3,000 pounds. Here's a quick guide on capacities. A true utility UTV typically has a capacity around 1,000 pounds, which a 0.35 cubic yard spreader works great. Today's half-ton trucks have a lot of capability, but they vary greatly, which makes a 0.5 to 0.7 cubic yard spreader a good fit. Three-quarter ton and one ton trucks are a very common choice in our industry, and for good reason. They're workhorses but the bed will limit spreader capacities to the 1.5 to 2 and a quarter cubic yard range. The flatbed trucks are increasing in popularity because of their weight carrying capacity. These are great for the three cubic yard spreaders and bigger. Just be mindful of the weight restrictions in your area or needing a CDL license. And now for the final decision. What type of material is the spreader constructed from? This one isn't too difficult since there's really only two out there today, poly or stainless steel. One main advantage to poly is the weight. Since they're lighter, they allow for more material to be transported. The other main advantage is material flow for two reasons. One, poly is more slippery than stainless steel. And the second reason is because it can be molded with complex geometry that feeds the delivery system better. The advantages of a stainless steel are they are easy to repair in case of a mishap and they typically cost less than poly because of their simpler construction. In summary, making the right choice for a spreader can be made simpler when following a logical flow for making decisions. Choosing the main material type should lead to the material delivery system that best matches it, how it's powered is up to you and your shop or your vehicle's capabilities. The capacity should be matched to the vehicle you intend to use unless you're in the market for both. This is a great time to look at a route planning and optimize it. And finally, the construction material is up to you. The poly construction offers a lot of advantages, but you'll pay a higher price for these features. I hope you found value in this presentation, and if you have any questions, please feel free to email them to info at douglasdynamics.com reference spreader choice in the subject line. Thank you and have a great season.